Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of The Nonprofit Show. Hey, we have a little bit of a fun change this morning, and we're going to call this the Battle of the Boards. <laughs> Sherry Quam Taylor, you ready, sister? I'm ready, Julia. I'm excited to be here with you. I am thrilled that you are here with me. Um, of all of our uh, co-hosts, which we'll get into in a minute, I feel like you and I are like the most aligned but I feel like we're aligned. This, these, this is my observation. <laughs> Tell like me. 20 years off. Oh. <laughs> like I'm 20 years in the future. Like, like we would have been besties in school. Yeah, yeah. Because I, you've got like the curly hair. I had really curly hair. Oh you, goodness. you know, our skin tone. I, everything. And I'm always like, oh my god, it's just such a crazy thing because I see <laughs> this like past life. You I know. know. Um, but there would have been the, the 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 hairspray with the bangs and the like the whole yeah. like that was hello. my that was me. Yeah, hello. Yeah. Yes, that was like my look in college, man. We'll compare photos. Yeah. <laughs> no, we won't. No, we won't. It, it's 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 a scary thing, but um, it's good. But anyway, long story short, Sherry Quam Taylor, CEO of Quam Taylor. I'm Julia C. Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. Today, we're going to talk about boards. We, the two of us, have both written extensively about boards. And so we're going to get into it. I think that we might have a few things that are different and we might have cool. some things that are the same. And so I can't wait to see where we come up against it and where we have some overlap. Uh, before we come up against it for the show, I want to make sure that we shout out are amazing sponsors and they include Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Fundraisers Friday, our new Friday episodes just dedicated to those of Love us it. out there fundraising, which is amazing. And then your part-time controller. You know, Sher I mentioned this to Sherry. We are so fortunate. We have this cadre of amazing co-hosts they come from us to us from all over the country. They're extremely diverse in what they where they serve, what they do. And I think, Sherry, there's a regional difference as well. Don't you? Totally agree. Uh, I see that in my clients because, you know, I work with people all over the country and uh, I completely see that uh, and even citywide, like even the different cities in the East Coast. I'm like, oh, OK, mm -hmm. that's a little different over there. So I totally oh. agree with you. You know, to me, it's uh, a fascinating thing because um, we have diversity in service, right? Mm -hmm. You know, um, you work in fundraising and coaching and, and a higher level uh, piece of what our work is. And then we have somebody like uh, Miko Marquette Whitlock, the mindful techie, yeah. and he really works with a a specific group on IT, but really with the people first, yes. um, you know, orientation. Uh, you know, we have the amazing Mitch Stein, who's all he's from. He's from Manhattan. I mean, super interesting man. Works all in the donor advised fund space and in the tech space, right? Yeah, love it. Um, Wendy Adams, Cultivate for Good, comes to us from the east uh, by way of. Florida. Um, she is an amazing, amazing coach and leader. And she really specializes in the management aspect of nonprofits, certainly mm -hmm. fundraising, but really a lot of deeper analysis on how we coach and how we work. Tony Bell, Mr. Nonprofit Consultancy, an amazing global thought leader on the structure of fundraising and how we need to look at the culture of philanthropy mm -hmm. and donor relationships. And then Meredith Terrian, who uh, serves the veterans segment. Love it. And, she, and how interesting is that? Love that. Love that niche. Oh, my gosh. So she's working with you know, government issues, veterans affairs issues, veterans population issues in within that nonprofit space. Fascinating, fascinating. So I love it. It's been fun to get to know everybody on LinkedIn. You know, I'm on LinkedIn all, uh, every single day. And so, of course, I connected with everybody because yeah. I kind of knew a few of the people. But um, it has been fun to get to know and, and even talk, you know, one on one with some of the other co-hosts. So thank you for that, uh, for broadening my network. 
No, it's really cool. I, I think they're just all so different and um, super intelligent. I, I always am like, wow, I, I learned so much from them. And, I, and it's just for me um, in this point in my life, I think that's what it's all about is like, what can I learn and yeah. how can I learn something new and different and, and change my mind or expand my mind. And so a You're lot wondering. of that. I, oh, okay. Speaking of. So, okay. <laughs> Speaking of, Carrie's new book, Build a Better Board Member, three overlooked characteristics that make or break your board success. Mm -hmm. Okay. Talk to us about this. Sister. Well, I mean, you're giving me props for writing a book and I have not written a book, but it, it is a more of a white paper. Uh, so you're the book writer here, but um, yeah, I, I feel like uh, so people can download it, you know, hop on my website or whatever, but Julia, I just, um, you know, I, I'm not a, a someone who focuses on board work. I always do a board workshop. And of course, I want my board members helping resource the organizations I work with. Um, but I was just finding these commonalities, um, honestly, things that my executive directors I was coaching, that they were struggling with with board members. And mm -hmm. and so I, I when, when I create a, a piece like this, I'll, I'll put like a big post up on my wall and I'm like, I'm going to write that. I'm going to write something about that. And so um, I just, I felt like there was uh, something, this, this kind of piece that I wrote, something bubbling to the surface to say like, these are actually these few, and I wrote three characteristics that nobody talks about, or frankly, I don't see on a board member job description. Mm -hmm. that frankly, I think are, are critical. Mm -hmm. And so that's what that piece is that, that you shared on your screen. Thank you for sharing that, that we're maybe going to kind of bounce back and, and talk about today. Well, it's really an interesting thing because I feel like for so long um, we have thought about what makes a good board member in a completely different way. Mm -hmm. And now like literally something that hasn't changed for close to a hundred years has been majorly up. There's been an upheaval. Yes. And so we're all trying to figure out what the secret sauce is, what we need to be doing. Um, and I don't know about you, but I talk to so many nonprofit leaders, people that will come up to me. Um, I was, I, I mentioned yesterday, I was at a luncheon and I sat next to um, a, a commissioner of a state organization. So this is an elect or an appointed by the governor um, official. And I won't say what they did, but um, she's like, I'm having a hell of a time with the board. <laughs> was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> we need to pay attention, you know? And it was like, she's like, can I, can you talk to me? Can I talk, you know? And I was just yeah. like, this plays out in my life, Sherry, every day. Yeah. And you know, it's such, um, I, I, I hate that it's, it is such angst for a lot of the amazing leaders I work with. And it's like, so many things are going well. They've, they've you know done all these things you know powered through covid re restructured their teams they've scaled and then like there's there too often i want to say too often there's a, a kind of thorn in their side that's that's mm -hmm. and if i could just get the board to do what they're <laughs> supposed to do or email me back um which is sad uh, and so i just see them spend so much time and energy on trying to get to the board from point a to point b yeah. um man, it's keeping, it's keeping organizations from growing. It really is. And I, I think that's why I uh, wrote and, and launched this book this year, yeah. Building Board Champions. And it's an interesting thing. Uh, it's an activation in, in like, oh, I hate that I were, we film in front of a green screen. And so, oh yeah, we show up. It still but looks anyway. great. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a, uh, it's 30, it's actually closer to 50, but it's, it's activations that you can do before a meeting, during a meeting mm -hmm. at a retreat that will help you to get the board kind of like rowing in the same direction. Love it. And so I think between the two of us, we have an interesting um, approach to, first of all, we've identified that there's some issues here and if we don't get this foundational part of our nonprofit sector, yeah. addressing it and working it, um, then we have so many more problems. Yeah, and yeah. Um, 
So it's been a really interesting journey to, to talk with people and to be able to lay this out in a way that um, I think can help folks. And I think if nothing else, Sherry, you and I having this discussion might help some nonprofits out there that they can't understand like why it's not working and they kind of think, okay, wait, there's something going on here. Yeah. But they haven't been able to identify it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, if I could like what we, we, we alluded to you being a learner, um, I was kind of afraid to say this for a little while, but you know, I think one of those characteristics that like, if I was leading an organization, I would be looking for from, from a board member, you know, it's like, is like, I actually want them to be a learner. And I think that the tone is always like, we need that board member, right? That person because of their expertise that they're bringing to the board. And that is true. But on the flip side, I find, you know, being in fundraising, I find that board members are not experts in fundraising. And mm -hmm. so, it, and so it's like, but wait, so you're, maybe you're a lawyer and you're bringing your legal expertise to the board. And so that's 50%, but I really need a board member to say, and then I'm here for you to teach me what appropriate fundraising is, what I should be doing as a board member. And I don't think we always uh, say that when we're sitting down and perhaps interviewing a board member to say, we love that you're bringing these skills and this expertise and this network. Um, here's what we're going to be, how we're going to be equipping you to be a good fundraiser. Right. Um, because guess what? They're experts at something else. You know, this lawyer example, they're a lawyer. They've probably never done fundraising, let alone done relational fundraising. Yeah. Um, Cause you know, I don't want boards doing, you know, all the churn and burn uh, kind of transactional fundraising. I want them helping build relationships and really right. yielding those bigger dollars. And so rarely have I found a board member, but hold on one hand, that actually has had that training and, and has that skill set. And so they kind of be learners. Mm -hmm. So characteristic number one, or I don't know if that's in, in the order, yeah. being a learner, which I love that because first of all, I know you've been on boards or you've worked with boards when you started observing them. And I've sat on boards where I, I would be like, holy crap, this board doesn't get what the mission is. Yes. Yes. They are not educated about the topic. Yes. Which is scary. Not just the stewardship, but I mean the topic. So yeah, there's a there's a factor in there of learning. So we've got learning as a characteristic. What are the other two? Yeah, so I would say uh, so learning and then um I would say a great board member knows to stay in their lane. Mm. Um you know, this is the opposite uh, or the opposite of that would be uh, you know trying to get into the day-to-day -day, uh, rhythms. Um somebody just the other day said um the company that they work for, they're a board member. Uh, you know, maybe we'll have that company help your help project manage your team. And we were like, no, that 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 is that is you getting way into the day to day. Um, and so I, I think it's uh, they stay in their lane. And then the other thing is, uh, I would say that great board members. The other third part is they are actually financially bold and creative when it comes to 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 saying, hey, we have a plan. Uh, and, and gosh, guess what? Our strategic plan calls for us to, I don't know, grow from a $5 million organization to a $10 million organization. Um, that is going to take some boldness. Uh, that's that's going to take someone say, well, what do we need to put in the budget? What do we need to spend? How do we need to be great investors so that we can yield that dollar amount? Um, the opposite of that is scarcity zone. And uh, I just find that even that, that taking on that fiduciary responsibility hat um, it doesn't mean just squeeze the budget. It means what do we need to put in the budget if we're going to double our organization? So I want them to be financially bold and creative. You know, Sherry, that is such an interesting number three. Fascinating. I had the great fortune of, of, of interviewing an outgoing CEO mm -hmm. of about an $80 million organization um, wow. that had served for 25 years and done amazing things and had taken a very small organization to this institutional size. Incredible. And uh, yeah, it, it, an amazing human being. And I said to him, I said, what was your biggest lesson? If you look back across the arc of your successful career, um, that's been very successful. What, what advice yeah. would you give? And he said, well, first of all, 
you know, you think that everything's been rainbows and unicorns and it has not, it has mm. been very hard and it's not one thing fell in my lap and, and put us up to this institutional size. But he said the magic, the magical thing that he learned and he did not learn it until later, much, mm. much later in his career was that big funders and big donors like big ideas. Yes. And he said, you know, to go out and ask for $10,000, just as tough as going out and asking for $10 million. Yes. And I was like, of all of the things he could have said, I was like, really? And he's like, he said, yeah. And he said, the first time that he asked for a big, big gift, he was exhausted. Hmm. He was frustrated. And he was kind of like, screw it. This is what I need. Yeah, it's what and I need. Like, because I want to do this. No one's ever done it. It's a big risk. It's bold. And the funder was like, hey, that's great. When do you need the check? Oh, my word. I, and I, you know, I, like, bang, bang, bang. Uh, Why didn't I do this earlier? Yeah, you nailed it. It's so, like, it's just counterintuitive in the sector. And let's, and I just pause when you tell me that story. And, and I tell my clients who are kind of maybe not quite there yet. And they're like, how would we grow? Like, um, my clients were getting multi six figure and last week, seven figure gift. Um, it, they're the ones with the boldest, most innovative plans and are willing to take risks because it's attracting those funders. So I, I yay for you doing that interview and, and this gentleman saying this. Um, and, and then, you know, we, we kind of sit back and go, well, why can't, why aren't we doing that? It's like, right. You got to have the plan. We got to, we got to be having those conversations and, um, we can't be irrationally frugal. Uh, like I, it's like, and so I think oftentimes we're, we're putting that board hat on and we're like the fiduciary responsibility just is this blinder. Yeah. Um, when we're solving the globe's problems in the nonprofit sector. So it's going to take a big solution for that. And so sit at the table and ask for what you need. So Sherry, how do you take that mindset approach like how do you take a board that has always been taught and, and and if they've served on other boards i'm sure this is the way it is on other boards it's yeah. like hey you're a fiduciary you can go to jail you know <laughs> if you don't do something right you know it's easier to say yeah. no than it is to say yes and and be frugal and and all that how do you take a group of people so mired in that approach and that yeah. mindset and un unleash that creativity yeah. and that big thinking? Yeah, the answer is slowly. And, okay. and, and what I mean by that is like oftentimes, um, so I, I'm always coming in and saying, okay, so there's your budget, there's your board approved budget. Okay, good. Uh, but what do you really need? And usually it's like, well, you know, we haven't given staff salary raises or we're not market rate or our reserve isn't what it needs to be. And gosh, we really would love to go into a second city and we haven't been able to do that. Mm -hmm. And so the exercise I always start with is, you know, there might be your board approved budget that's in your QuickBooks file and you're reporting on. But if you don't take that moment to say, what actually do we really need? And I don't mean we need triple, we need like, but like, really, what do we need to be able to attract funders and have different conversations. And so first step is always understanding there's your budget and there's your need. And here's the, I'll just share my secrets today. Here's the kicker. If your fundraising team is basing their plans, their activities, their model, their strategy on the budget, the squeak by versus the actual need, guess which number they're going to raise to. Right. Not the real need. We need to be forward propelling in our goals. Right. So sometimes when when I a board says that or I say that to a board and they're like, oh, I guess that makes sense. It's like, yeah, that actually gets funders excited and then they start seeing the results and they start seeing the team act differently and they right. slowly get on board. Mm -hmm. um, that's hardest for the accountant or the lawyer uh, <laughs> on the board who's like by the book, like right. we must <laughs> report out on the ENL. <clears throat> I want you doing that but your, your fundraising team can, their, their strategy cannot be rooted in that squeak by budget. You know, it's fascinating because I have two questions for you. One, um, how does a board really know what um, is needed 
and and how can they understand what some of those pieces are and then the mm -hmm. other piece is um how do we integrate that and i'm just going to use the word stretch goal and i don't know what what you think about yeah. this but um to your point when we especially if we're the size of an organization where we're being audited um and we have you know a cfo that would have absolute apoplexy over this plus we have leadership um c-suite to board that can't even begin to think that this mm -hmm. is a rational approach how do we navigate this do we yeah. have like that secondary budget or what's yeah. your, what's your advice on that you know it's so funny uh usually it's like uh we need a meeting with the cfo and i'm like oh great i love the cfo uh, I'm proud to say they like me after that after that meeting where they're like, oh, she's not crazy. There, there, there actually is a process here. Um, but your first question, you know, I, I go back to the fact that people come to me and they say, oh, well, we have a new strategic plan. We're really excited about it. It's got all this growth in it, infrastructure needs. Um, but we made it three years ago. We don't have the money to do it. Right. It's like, okay, well. That, that means we actually aren't budgeting to the need in your strategic plan. Mm -hmm. And so I go back to like, if we've empowered the ED to actually roll out um, the strategic plan and say, hey, I need these resources to do what's in the strategic plan, which usually is infrastructure, team, tools, mm -hmm. technology, then we, we kind of have no choice but to raise to the need. Um, but, but on the flip side of that, like, that is why a lot of people come to me. It's like, we made this incredible plan. We all got so excited about it and we don't have the money to do it, or we don't have the unrestricted money to do it. And so it, it, it's really, a are we serious or not? Are we, nice. are we going to own the fact that we need to be ra raising more money? And sometimes that looks like investing in our fundraising team to learn how to do that in more strategic ways or more hours to dollars alignment ways. Um, mm -hmm. So it really does come back to the leader. And the, that's probably that middle one of like no one to, you know, get in your lane and, and stay out of the lane. Right. It's really that day to day implementation and that ED saying, no, this is the year we need to invest that 30K into some technology or mm -hmm. we need to hire that deputy director so that X can happen. Yeah. Um, and, and to say, OK, well, we've empowered you, leader to tell us what you need to fulfill the strategic plan. And we trust you in that. And we're behind you in that. Mm -hmm. It's huge. You know, it, it also seems to me, Sherry, when you talk about this, and I talk about this throughout my book, yeah. uh, Building Board Champions, it's kind of an arc. And that is communication. Mm. You've got to, so much of this, of board leadership, and especially, you know, you brought up strategic planning. It's like a long weekend. Everybody rolls their eyes. They yes. go away. Yes. Maybe to like a crappy hotel conference room. <laughs> and then there's like a hired gun that tries to rally the troops and get everybody. Icebreaker. Yeah. Yeah. And if they're just like, kill me now. I hate this part. And then it sits on the shelf. Right. And that we're not coming back and communicating. Yeah. And so to hear you talk about this um, and some of these stretch mentalities it's got to be i think more successful and tell me what you think if we're continuously saying hey remember this is why we're doing this yeah. or we've achieved this or yeah. you know we're close or how does that play in yeah i think you're right i mean i we could probably say communication is the most important thing in every part of of, of the sector or, you know all all of our nonprofits. but um yeah i do you know it is interesting um when I do workshops and again, they're, they're about fundraising, but there has been, I'll sometimes ask an ED or, or a fundraising team. I'll say, if there's one thing I could say to your board, that's kind of like weird and you can't say it, what would that be? Um, and I'll, oftentimes they'll say like, could you email me back when I email you? Oh or God. could you like have a thought if I send a pre-read? And I'm like, really, that's the thing you want me to say? Oh my God. But it really comes down to communication and, um, and, and, and I, that makes me a little sad to have that be my example, but I can honestly point to quite a few right now that are struggling with that. Yeah. Um, you know, if this is, if you, if you, if you can't fulfill your role, like, it, you know, step off the board, I guess, but it really comes, I, I could not agree with you more. It comes down to communication, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and that just impacts at so many levels. It does. You know, I am such a huge proponent of the board liaison. I mean, that's mm. like, 
my one of my favorite topics. Talk to me a little more about that. Oh my God. It's like the it's the oh, it's the tell secret me. sauce. Okay, tell if me. You, so a board liaison is generally the person, it's an admin role. I've worked with organizations where actually it's uh that's all they do. Mm -hmm. And so they are that person that administrates information, communications, um, tactical things from meetings to minutes to voting yeah. to uh, requirements. If you have anything from COI policies that need to be, you know, signed every year to give or gets or whatever yes. it is, yeah. it is, it is an administrative person who's good with detail and has some personality and is not daunted by high level, you know, high, yes. high operationally yeah. functioning people from the community who can call a CEO and say, you know, hello, Ms. CEO. Um, we sent over these four documents that you need to execute yeah. and I haven't seen them. Right. right. And so that board liaison oftentimes is the um, CEO's um, admin. Yes. I was just going to ask that. And, and they're paid for this. They attend all the meetings. They, they administrate things. They understand where the bodies are buried. Um, they really are along for that ride. And then yeah. they become an interface for the board members. Makes sense. You, you said stay in the lane, right? And when you have a board liaison, that person oftentimes assists with that. Yeah. I love because it. And I never see that, Julia. I never no, see that. No, no, you don't. Not enough. Um, I do a lot of board liaison training. Mm. I, it's like, again, one of my favorite topics. Um, and when I get, <laughs> when I get asked by people, we started this conversation, uh, you know, nonprofit leaders that will say, oh, my board. And I'll, my first question is what? Well, do you have a board liaison? Yeah, that's going to be my be like, question. I love it. Be like, what is that? No, but I don't even know what it means. And, you know, I think that's one of the things is because it puts a layer of administrative behavior in there yes. and Sherry accountability. Yes. You know, accountability. Right. And yeah, so agreed. it's like boards that you've sat on where the meeting is like, Oh yeah. Next Tuesday at 10, can everybody join? And I'm like, Oh, yeah. I need my, my board appointments a year out. Yes. So you can work around them. Absolutely. A year Absolutely. out. And, and, you know, that's like one of my sticky wickets. But um, anyway, I think that there's just a lot of, of process going on here. Um, and I think that it's, it's a time that's exciting because we have all these people leaving. We have the silver tsunami. Yes. Uh, 1.8 million nonprofits seeing an exodus of leadership opportunities for new leadership. It's very huge. exciting. It is exciting. I, can I, can we tell people that I, I pre-recorded you for my podcast coming out here soon? Okay. And I'm still thinking about our interview of you talking mm -hmm. about, um, you know, bring, bringing younger people onto the board and, and millennials and what's that's doing to board structure. And yeah. um, it was a fascinating conversation. I am so excited to promote it. And you just really opened my eyes to like, I already, already wanted an age diverse board, but like now I see it as such an asset after that interview. So I'm excited. Um, oh my gosh. Well, you good. Taught, well, you you taught me that. <laughs> you made my day. But yeah. You know, really, I, I think if, if we think about, you know, we're in the, um, the the largest transference of wealth and it's not like coming we are in it yes um some estimates go from 70 to 90 trillion wow. um, all of the major financial institutions have numbers um but it is a, an arduous thing to be thinking about and to be measuring and if we don't understand what the next gen profile of donors is looking right. for we will be really shocked at how this all plays out because it yeah. won't turn out for our boards as we thought mm -hmm. it would be. Well, Sherry, I could talk to you all day, um, every day. Um, please go to Sherry Quam's uh, website and it, it Quam Taylor, excuse me. Okay. And you can go to quamtaylor.com. And this is not the only document that you can get from Sherry. She's a lot of great great thinking pieces that will help your structure 
um, and help your leadership. Build a better board member. Three overlooked characteristics that make or break your board's success. Now, I got to plug my book. As you do. <laughs> Building Board Champions, Activating Impactful Nonprofit Board Members. It's available on Amazon.com. And you can just type in Building Board Champions. Comes up. But anyway, yeah. I love it. You, you know, I love this conversation. I, I appreciate what you do for our sector, Sherry. I think you're one of the great minds in our country. Um, and I, I find it fascinating that you have to come back to the board structure. Mm. It, it's fascinating to me. And I think that's how important this whole conversation is. It's not, we can't just say, oh, well, we need to do better fundraising. It's much deeper than that. It is deeper. It, it, we've got to, everything gets fixed at the root. And this is one of those things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you are one of the great roots of our tree um, and one of the branches or several of the branches of our oh, tree thank you. Are, are, are our presenting sponsors. They include Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Fundraisers Friday, and your part-time controller. Sherry, we end each and every episode with this mantra. It yeah. means something different to me all the time. And I'm going to think about this in terms of board health mm. and board wellness. And the message is this, to stay well so you can do well. Thank you, my friend. Thank you for having me as always.